ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale Hot Toys Star Wars figure unboxing and review video. Now today, finally, we're going to be taking a look at Han Solo himself from, of course, the film Solo. Now, this is the first of the two figures that were just released by Hot Toys. It's not very often that we get two figures released on the same day, but it happened for these two right here. Now, this one is the more civilianized version of Han Solo. The one that we have coming up next that I'm super excited for is, of course, the Mud Trooper version. So definitely keep an eye out on the channel for that video coming up very soon. Now, this one right here comes in two different flavors. You can get this one, which is, of course, the deluxe version with the secondary look, or you can get the basic version if you don't really care for that sort of big coat. It's a bit weird, but then again, we'll have to wait and see when we get it out of the box. Now, I ordered mine from ToysWonderland.com. They do have payment plans available, they do have reward programs, and they are shipping with DHL and FedEx to get your collectibles to you very, very quickly, even in this current climate. And while you're in the description, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you're notified as soon as brand new hot toys or indeed third-party content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for, of course, the solo movie version of Han Solo. Really nice image of the figure on the front of the box. Don't adjust your screens. For some reason, this image is super, super warm. I don't know what kind of filters Hot Toys have put on here, but no, it's not the way I'm filming it. This picture is super orange, and so is this picture down the bottom there. Not entirely sure why they've gone for that look. But either way, you can see this is the deluxe version, denoted by this kind of cheap-looking sticker on the front of the the box you can see the two different looks this version does of course come with the coat goggles climbing belt gloved hands and interchangeable hair sculpture which means that you can swap out the hair piece so you can put the goggles on you can see to denote that this is the deluxe version the fur coat which is on the front of the box there again that nice sort of wrap around these i really don't mind but these stickers really not a huge fan of another picture of solo on the side nothing on that side and then of course the traditional hot toys info on the back of the box now let's get this guy out here I guessed a few times on the Six Scale Network podcast that this guy was going to be coming out very soon, and finally I was right, here he is. This is actually a really nice image of the figure. It is a little bit less warm in terms of the color tone, not that that really matters. You can of course see that tease of Chewbacca on the side there, that unfortunately never came to fruition. Still hoping, fingers crossed, that Hot Toys do deliver on a solo movie version of Chewbacca, but I do have an idea of how to kitbash one, hopefully in the future. So stay tuned to the channel for that. Now, here we have the figure himself. This guy looks like he comes loaded with a bunch of accessories. And usually with Star Wars figures, they do get a lot of love. For those of you who don't know, Howard Chan, the CEO of Hot Toys, really does love Star Wars. So it definitely makes sense that he pours a lot of attention to detail into these pieces right here. But let's take a look at the solo movie version of the figure. Actually, I just noticed that it doesn't have that cross brace on the front of the box there. So you're able to pull the figure straight out of the box without having to remove that piece of plastic that can sometimes damage your figure. So I really like that Hot Toys isn't just innovating with the figures themselves, but also with the way they do their packaging. Very, very interesting. But either way, here we have the figure. And I have to say, that head sculpt looks absolutely sensational. Spot on to Alden Ehrenreich. And I apologize if I butchered that name, but he looks really, really good. The sculpt is a little bit softer than the prototype, yes, but you can definitely see the wrinkles in the sort of smirk and the skin tone looks amazing as well. I can't wait to compare this not only to the Harrison Ford version of Han Solo, but also to the Mud Trooper version to see if there are any subtle differences between the two. But either way, let's set him down and take a look at what else he comes with. You can see he does come with his blaster, other bits and pieces. That looks like the secondary hair. You can see the goggles, his gold dice. He really comes loaded with a bunch of things. You can see the alternate gloved hands, the traditional sort of driving glove hands, and also it looks like he does come with one regular skin tone hand so you're getting three different types of hands with your solo figure but either way what we're going to do now is get all of these bits and pieces laid out in the light box and take a closer look 
and everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with the deluxe version of Han Solo. Now most of the deluxe pieces are on the side right here, bearing in mind that these gloves actually do come with this look, but this is pretty much what you get. Now let's take a look at the display base first. Now as you can see, traditional Star Wars style display base with of course the metal nameplate. I absolutely love that. You do have the Millennium Falcon on the front there, but for some reason not the Solo version with the sort of front escape pod piece. This is the more traditional style. Not sure why they went with that. I would have liked them to keep to the theme of the movie, but I guess this does work. Now you can see he does have a sandy effect for the display base and then a more sort of snowy effect, but it comes across more grey and more sort of dusty rather than snow. So not sure what they were trying to go for with that look, but definitely a fan of the fact that you have the interchangeable plates for the display base itself. Now let's take a look at the deluxe accessories first before we move on to the normal bits and pieces. Now this is the secondary jacket that he does come with. In order to attach it to the figure, it's an interesting way to do it. This is actually a facade. It's not a real jacket. You slot the figure on the inside there and then use these little press snaps to close the jacket up. I really do like the material. It's very soft. It's very nicely done. There's a gradation to the color. It's not just all one color, but it kind of looks like Chewbacca's cousin. I know it's a little bit ridiculous to say that, and it was accurate to the movie, but if you told me we were getting a solo with two different looks, which one would I choose? I would have probably chosen his Corellia look with his white style jacket. That would have been my personal preference. This is still good, don't get me wrong, but am I ever going to display him in this look? Uh, probably not. Now, he also does come with the goggles to go along with that look, and the secondary hairpiece, which does attach with a magnet. You can see that it's sort of cinched around the back, so you can place the goggles on the sculpt and get that look. I'd exercise a bit of caution when using this on the head sculpt itself, because it is hard plastic. You don't want to damage the paint. Now what I'm thinking about doing with this is picking up a second Chewbacca from The Force Awakens and using these goggles, making a new bandolier, printing him out a new gun, and then having a solo version of Chewbacca. But stay tuned to the channel on whether or not I try and do that, but for now I am definitely planning on getting that done. Now he does come with this piece right here, which is his climbing gear. Again, not a very exciting accessory, but I'm sure you can put together some really cool climbing poses with this piece right here and of course the final deluxe piece aside from the gloves is this scarf that just goes around his neck very basic it's sewn in place you can't get this wrong it just slots on the neck and then it's job done now he does come with of course his traditional Han Solo DL-44 blaster. Really interesting story how he got this from Beckett. He deconstructed the sniper rifle and then gave him this pistol. I know a lot of people weren't a huge fan of that, but still, it works for me. And so does this blaster. It is very clean, and it moves away from that sort of dirty, damaged look that, of course, we have in Star Wars. But this being new, at least, to the character of Han Solo, it definitely does work. It's painted nicely, sculpted nicely, and it does really look like the blaster it's supposed to, which means it's definitely doing the right job. Now, he does come with this tiny little wrist-worn communicator. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It's painted orange. You can see the little number pad details on there are really nicely picked out. He does come with this piece right here. Still, to this day, I don't know what this is. Please let me know down in the comments. Is it a droid caller? Is it a communication device? Do let me know. And then, of course, he does come with his iconic nowadays, his iconic golden dice. I never even knew about these until we got the sequel movies and and of course, this movie right here. Call me a fake Star Wars fan for not knowing, but I just didn't. But now, of course, we have a little bit more lore around it, and you can see it does have a real metal chain, and the dice do look really darn good. Now, you do get three different styles of Han Solo hands. You do have this one right here, which is to go with his deluxe outfit. More poofy, more sort of leather glove style. You do have this one right here, which is also a leather glove style, but more of a driving glove with those sort of perforated dots. More more traditional for Han Solo, and then of course just the traditional Han Solo human style hands. You don't get a much, you don't get many of these, I should say, but you do get a bunch of the other ones. So definitely, they're trying to get you to lean towards using the gloved hands. Either way, that's pretty much it for the accessories. What we're gonna do now is get Han Solo himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have Solo himself standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, this figure has a very clean silhouette. I don't know what kind of body Hot Toys is using here. The arms are really thin, but the legs are a little bit thicker. So I'm really impressed with whatever parts Hot Toys have got out of their parts bin and put this figure together with, because it looks 
absolutely fantastic. The head sculpt as well suits the body very nicely. I initially thought when I saw the prototype pics that the head looked a little bit bobble-headed, but totally a non-issue in hand. This thing looks absolutely fantastic. And as I said, the silhouette is really, really clean. Very, very impressed with this figure just standing straight up and down. Either way, what we're going to do now, however, is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have the solo movie version of Han Solo up close and personal. And let's take a look at the head sculpt first. You already would have seen it in the unboxing segment, but this thing looks really, really good. I think they've captured the actor's likeness almost perfectly. Yes, the prototype was a little bit sharper and the details have softened a little bit, but not too much in my personal opinion. It definitely still looks like him. I love the subtle smirk. I love the paint details. I love that sort of glint of life in the eyes. From right there, I think the likeness is absolutely spot on to this version of Han Solo. Now, yes, liking this version of Han Solo is definitely a prerequisite to getting this figure. Luckily, I personally do. Now, I do have one complaint about the overall look and it's the fact that this jacket, in fact, pretty much the entire outfit, is just too darn clean. I know this is supposed to be a fresh look for him in the movie, but I don't think I've ever seen a suede style jacket as clean as this one right here. I think, or I would have thought at least that there would have been some black wash in the seams and around where all the joints are, maybe on the sleeves as well, just to show a little bit of life, a little bit of wear and tear on this piece right here. As you see it, in my personal opinion, for my tastes, it's a little bit too fresh. It still looks good, don't get me wrong, but just not as weathered as I'd like. And the same goes for the rest of the outfit, it all looks really, really good, but also really clean. I do like this classic style shirt, but in the grey, definitely a nice different sort of contrast to the more original trilogy look for Han Solo with the white shirt. This definitely is a more sort of classic look, and it kind of works for the time period, I guess, that this is set in. You don't want to be walking around with a white shirt, way too vibrant for when you're doing all your scavenging and your scoundrel work. But either way, enough of that, he does look really good. What we're going to do now is pan the camera down down and give you a closer look at the legs. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit. As you can see, the clean look really does carry on throughout. This piece right here, in particular, the holster, is way too clean. It's a really nice tan leather, except even on the inside there, let's be honest, he's putting his blaster in and out, that would be nowhere near as clean as it is. At least this clasp is magnetic and it's really nice the way it attaches, but still far too clean. Now the details are there, they do look really good. The belt buckle has a tiny bit of weathering on the outside there, so too does the upper belt, and it looks good, but I wish they'd carried that on throughout the rest of it. Now he does have this little metal clip. It is metal for his little communicator piece to go on there, so it's a really nice sturdy connection. Now in terms of the pants, as you can see, they are the traditional Han Solo style pants with the red striping down the outside there. However, I do think they're a little bit less vibrant than I would have liked. A nicer, sharper sort of red would have been really good. At the moment, they look a little bit purple and I'm not a huge fan of the way they look. Probably accurate to the film, but for me personally, I would have liked this to be a little bit more vibrant. Now in terms of the boots themselves, they are the Hot Toys traditional Star Wars style boots, except they are a lot more rounded towards the front, a little bit more chunky. I don't like the way they look. They're too big in my opinion. I like the A New Hope style boots that they have on Han Solo, a little bit thinner towards the front. These look a little bit too large. The weathering, however, is really good. It's very nicely done, but a little bit out of place because the rest of the outfit is so nice and clean. It still looks good, don't get me wrong, well painted, and it really does sort of add to the realism, but for me personally, I would have liked them a little bit cleaner to match the rest of the look. Now, it seems like they fixed the little piece that sort of goes in towards the ankle there. You can sort of futz with the boot itself, but then again, it has wrinkling everywhere, so you're bound to have one sort of trade-off here or there. I would have liked a plastic sculpted boot and a cover piece that goes over the top, but alas, this is what we got. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the solo movie version of Han Solo standing alongside the Harrison Ford original trilogy look. Now bear in mind, mine is wearing the Stormtrooper Disguise head sculpt, and I think it looks a little bit better, but we're not here to talk about that, here to talk about what these two look like standing together. You can see that there is a lot of design similarities between the two. They look really, really good, and I like being able to have these two 
different eras of Han Solo standing together. That being said, I know a lot of people will say this is Solo standing alongside the real Han Solo, and I get that, I really do, but for me personally, I like the movie and I really do like this figure, especially now seeing him standing alongside the original Han Solo. Now, of course, the comparisons wouldn't be complete without having Solo standing alongside his friend, his buddy, Chewie. And I think this looks really good. I like the height difference between the two. And I know this is the original trilogy version of Chewbacca. And it probably would have looked a little bit better, maybe with the Force Awakens version. That's the one I'm planning on getting a second of and doing a custom. But I know a lot of people do prefer this version of Chewie. That's why he's standing there. And he does look really, really good. So if you do have this Chewie and you think about getting this solo, that's what your shelf will look like with them standing side by side. Just going over articulation on Han Solo himself. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure so I'm going to be a little bit more careful when I'm moving the joints around. I'm sure when you get yours in hand you can go a little bit further than I'm willing to on your personal copy. Either way starting off with the head sculpt itself it is on a fixed neck joint so you do get a little bit of restriction but it is totally fine. You definitely get a bunch of range of motion out of the sculpt itself. It is on one of those dumbbell style joints a ball joint in the top of the head and also a ball joint in the neck so you do get, as I said, a fairly decent range of motion. So I'm really impressed with that. Now, in terms of the arms themselves, they do go pretty much out as unrestricted as you'd expect. It's just wearing a shirt and a sort of suede style jacket. So just be careful not to ruin the jacket too much in terms of creasing. But then again, it is fabric. So I'm sure you're going to be totally fine. So out to about there, forward to about there before it starts getting a little bit restricted, but you can move it around and get it to where you need it to go. You have a double bend at the actual elbow, swivel at the upper bicep and of course you do have a traditional 1-6 scale joint at the wrist itself. Now in terms of the actual body this is where you're going to see the benefit of having a cloth outfit. You do have a nice crunch, swivel and you do have two joints. You have one up here and then one at the waist as well. So as I said a bunch of range of motion. That's the lower one and then that's the upper one. So you can get some really nice poses out of this guy. Now in terms of the legs they are a little bit more restricted due to the tighter nature of the pants. They go forward to about there. They go out to about there before I'd start to worry about stressing out the pants themselves. You do have a really nice double bend at the actual knee, swivel at the upper thigh, and of course a traditional 1-6 scale joint at the ankle itself. Just be careful not to wear out the pleather on the boots. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about Han Solo. The first annoying thing has to be the cleanliness of the outfit. I'm looking specifically at this super vibrant tan belt. I don't think, at least, it was that clean in the movie. Don't get me wrong, I still love the way it looks, but overall, I'm not too impressed with how clean all of the bits are on this figure. The second annoying thing is, of course, the age-old Star Wars boot problem. I do think they could have done a plastic split-cut boot design here, and it would have looked really good if they'd had the front piece overlap over the top. Then we wouldn't have had this sort of buckling issue. But still, even with the fixes they've done to the ankle so they don't buckle in at the sides, it still creases and looks a little bit unsightly. The third annoying thing, and I know it goes along the lines of more of a personal preference thing than anything else, but it's the fact that this was included as the deluxe accessories. I would have much rather the alternate look from Corellia where he had the different outfit. That would have been my personal preference over this one right here because I really love that white jacket look. It looked absolutely awesome. It would have gone along really nicely with your patrol trooper, but no, we got this instead. Yes, it still looks really good, but it wasn't really a super iconic look, at least for me personally for Han Solo. The first cool thing about this Han Solo figure has to be the head sculpt and more specifically how the hair attaches over the top. You wouldn't even know that this was a magnetic hairpiece. It is so darn seamless. Yes, you can see a tiny seam along the side there, but overall it looks pretty much like a single sculpted piece and that is super impressive. The second cool thing has to be the detail on the outfit itself all the way down to the little cartridges and buckles and bits and pieces. It is meticulously well crafted crafted and I absolutely love all of the attention to detail on all the rivets and everything that Hot Toys have put in here. Yes, it's a little bit too clean, but that does not detract from how good it really does look in terms of the inclusions and sculpted bits and bobs. The third cool thing is if you go for the deluxe version of Solo, you have three different versions of gloves, not just for this version of Solo, but for other versions of Solo and also for other custom figures. You've got clean hands, you've got driving glove style hands, and of course you've got these big leather gloves as well, so I really do appreciate the fact that Hot Toys have gone all out with 
their choice of gloves. Just wrapping up on the more classic civilian version of Han Solo from of course the Solo movie. Now I know this movie was pretty divisive, a lot of people weren't a huge fan of the casting and at the time I myself wasn't either, I thought there were actors that could have portrayed this role better, but seeing the film I really did like Alden Ehrenreich's portrayal. If he didn't work as a character in the movie the whole thing was dead in the water, but in my opinion he absolutely nailed it and so did Hot Toys. I bet you didn't see that segue coming, you thought I was going to go on about the movie, but no this figure is really just that darn good. It's absolutely fantastic in fact. While I did have a few complaints about the outfit being super clean, the choice of deluxe accessories, overall those are kind of just nitpicks. The figure itself is a really really strong release. The outfit isn't all that restrictive so you can get him in some really classic Han Solo scoundrel shooting poses and that is what in my opinion really does sell the figure along with a very very strong head sculpt. This has to be one of my favorite head sculpts that Hot Toys have done for a Star Wars character. It's very impressive. Yes, there were a couple of changes down the line since the prototype, which we always do see, but does that mean that it's any worse than the prototype? I personally don't think so. I think it's still, as I said, a very strong head sculpt, and this figure overall I am super impressed with, and I think that it's well worth picking up and adding in to your Star Wars collection. Unfortunately, no Chewbacca, but that hopefully will be fixable down the road. Now, either way, I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com. They're in stock now, ready to ship with FedEx, DHL, or of course EMS if you'd like to wait a little bit longer, and I'm talking 30 days, so I'd go with DHL or FedEx. That's how I got mine really darn quick. Link for that is down in the description below. Also check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.